Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new here, I am Mare and I'm currently almost done actually with my study abroad program here in Japan. And this video is on what it's really like coming to Ritsumeikon's uh, studying Kyoto program or the SKP program. I've been here since September and it's almost actually coming up to the last week of classes here, which is crazy to me because it feels like it took forever to get here. And I'm doing the Intensive Japanese or IJL program. And so I'll refer to the program, the Studying Kyoto program, as SKP throughout this video, and then IJL for my Intensive Japanese track. Let's get started. The SKP program is with three tracks to it. There's the OSC, or Open Study in English, Intensive Japanese, or IJL track, and then the Business track, I don't know the abbreviation for it, it's actually at one of its Makon's other campuses, so I've never met anyone from that program itself. So I am not speaking for OSC, I'm not speaking for Big Business, I am only speaking for the IJL track. So for the Intensive Japanese track, one thing that you have to know is that if you end up not wanting to do it anymore or I guess with all of the tracks actually when you apply to a certain track and you have to you cannot switch it which is seems fine in theory and I was not concerned about it until I was supposed to be here for a full year but I didn't want to continue doing Japanese for a full year because it turns out I kind of suck at it and I didn't want to do it anymore and so because I, it was either continue Japanese and not do what's best for me next semester or go home early, I wanted to see if maybe I could stay here but switch to the open studying English track and it was a big no. They were like, you can't do that, you have to stay in Japanese or you have to go home. And I was kind of annoyed by it for a long time. But anyway, that's why I'm coming home a semester early because I, can, I cannot do Japanese. I just can't. I suck at it. So this program, it's very rigid and you can't switch tracks later on and which I don't particularly like because people do change their minds and something is not for them and that's all right. And I think you should be able to change your mind up until when classes start or like for instance like if you're here for a full year and you want to go into the open study and English track or you want to go into like beginner level intensive Japanese like I think you should be able to do that and I don't know why you can't so first of all one thing I strongly dislike about this program is how classes are selected so for me personally I had to have 12 credits that through Simmons University in Boston I had to have 12 credits that registered me as like a full-time student I guess so because of that I needed to register for two more classes yes two more classes and because Japanese counts for eight credits so the way Japanese works here is if you're doing intensive Japanese every class meeting counts for a credit so my level two Japanese meets eight times a week so it's eight credits and I needed 12 so and then the English classes I think they're all two credits I could be wrong um, but the English classes are two credits, so I just needed two extra classes. But the way it's done is very confusing. So, so you're given this packet, and it's like a class listing that IJL students can take. So you do the English class selection after the open study and English students do it. Um, so already, like the classes that you are offered from are limited just in what classes aren't full yet and then you're also limited in the fact that your Japanese has already a set schedule so it's not like you can move anything around you have to pick classes that go around Japanese and then a lot of the classes only have like three seats available so it's done by a raffle based process so when I was selecting classes I knew I needed these two classes so I ended up registering for four and I got into three of them so I'm in three extra English classes right now. But I wanted to drop one of my English classes because I was like, I don't want to have to take extra classes if I don't need them because they don't count for my major. I was only doing it for Simmons because they required it. And so the one I wanted to drop, I couldn't drop. And I was like, that's weird. So anyway, I'm stuck in these three classes. 
that probably won't even transfer over anyway. But I'll get back on to that one in a second. And then, so the whole class registration process is very stressful because if you need a certain amount of classes and you don't get them, like that will cause problems for you at home. But also, if your school requires you to get your study abroad credits lined up in advance before you go on your program, you cannot do that with Ritz Macon because they don't put an updated class offering list online. And also, the syllabi here are not that detailed and they're very vague. And for Simmons anyway, if I need to transfer in credits, they require the syllabus that details like an American style syllabus where it's pretty detailed in what you do and the learning objectives and everything. That is not how that happens here. So that can also cause a little bit of problems. So if you're watching this, just keep that in mind. Um, I don't know why they do it like that, but they just do. So with Japanese, you can start intensive Japanese here at level one, which is beginner level, completely new. I'm level two, so I'm like intermediate level. I think personally with level two, I do have, like my whole class has the least amount of work in all of the Japanese classes. So that's been a plus. But I have learned nothing in these Japanese classes because of the way they're taught. So classes are every day. So, and I have three classes total. I have comprehensive, which meets every single day. I have speaking and listening, which meets twice a week. So I have that on Tuesdays and I have that on Thursdays. And then writing, which is where we learn the kanji. That meets once a week on Fridays. So because of this, I normally have two to three quizzes a week, which is a lot, and it's kind of problematic because I study for the quiz, and then I take the quiz, and then I immediately forget what I studied because it's not repeated at all, and it's the same thing with the grammar points. So this is what our note packet looks like. So our textbook's all in Japanese, and then you can buy a translation book. Um, they do give you an vocab packet. I'll also show you that. In the vocab packet, they star the ones that are on the vocab quiz, so you don't actually learn all the vocab for level two. In higher levels, you do, but for level two, they're pretty chill about it. The grammar notes, they, this is where our homework is as well, so I'll show you. So you have the lesson, and then it's broken up into parts. So for homework, sometimes you'll have, let's say like lesson 32 sections, one, two, and three. And then you just answer, normally there's a few sentences and then sometimes there's like how to conjugate something, stuff like that. And it goes along with the textbook, obviously. But when you do that and then you cover it in class, you don't go back to it. So you just keep on going through this packet but you don't really refresh and review anything, which is not how I learn. And so by the time it comes to the test, which I have on this upcoming Tuesday, stay tuned. I'll be doing a finals week in my life here in Japan vlog. So stay tuned for that. But a lot of the review is me actually just review, like relearning everything because we learned it one day and then I immediately forgot it because we don't really talk about it again. So yeah, IJO, I feel like I've learned nothing in and I've kind of given up my will to go to school anymore. Also, 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 if you are coming here and you are doing the intensive Japanese program, you cannot leave early to go home to your spring semester if you are, if your spring semester and this program overlap. There's a little bit more wiggle room with OSC classes and they may let you do your presentations early or turn in your papers early. With IJL, you have to stay until the last day of class. So I'm actually missing a week of class to be here. So that's fun. Transferring credits over is a pain in the butt here. So my Japanese credits get automatically included on my transcripts. If you fail a class here, I have heard that it doesn't even go on your transcripts. So, doesn't really affect your grades much, I suppose. Um, but with some of the English classes, they don't go on your transcripts and you need to do a series of screenshots and send them to your home university. So, I don't know if that causes problems with your universities at home, but just keep that in mind. I don't know if that's just something that happens this year or if it's happened every year, but I'm not even sure if my English classes will count at Simmons. So that's pretty annoying. 
but if they don't count in the low key, you're just not going to do the final papers on them because what is the point? There are three dorms. I don't really think I need to talk about the dorms. Uh, Tokiwa, Utano, Taishogun. I live in Taishogun, which is the newest dorm, and it is the one closest and most centrally located, I believe. Um, so we have a bus stop right in front of our, our dorm. There's uh, the JR train that's only 10 minutes away by walking. And we're only about 15 to 20 minutes away from campus by walking. The other dorms, you I think, are relatively far. Most students take buses or the Randon train, and so it can get a little costly. Tokiwa does have a public bath instead of private showers. And Utano has a toilet in its room, so you have your own toilet, I guess if you want your own toilet and you don't mind commuting a little bit go with Utano but I like Taishogun it is the biggest dorm so there is less of a community but I think it's a really awesome dorm so I guess that's one's just a preference there's not much to talk about with the dorms they are kind of expensive I'm used to living on campus uh, some students who do not live on campus at home in their home countries did have a hard time adjusting um, but if you go to an American university, you probably have lived on campus at least one year, so it's pretty nice. They're all singles. I live by myself. It's a pretty nice setup. Anyway, I think that's all. That is the T on the SKP program. I hope you guys like this vlog. Stay tuned for my next week's vlog because I will be doing a crazy week in my life vlog, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!